Good morning viewers, on this morning we have KSP to Mars episode 64. I'm Lorenzo and I'm recording this before breakfast, before work, before showers, because I'm motivated to make videos now that I don't have the time to do so anymore. Anyway, what we're doing today is landing on Venus, hopefully at any rate. But before we do that, we want to get some science in, science of space near Venus specifically. So let's go ahead and take a look at our instruments. Do we have some sunlight? No, nah, just a trickle. So let's take a look here at the goo canister. 53 science points for that. Keep the data please. And why are these science instruments so hard to find in the dark? Let's have a look. This one has data in it already, so let's look at this one. 59.1 from... <laughs> this location seems safe enough from cosmic rays. Well, that's good to know, because NFOL is going to go out on EVA many times. The barometer won't work out in space. Um, where are the other sensors? Ah, there they are. Illuminated by the glow of a fuel tank, because why not? Let's see, the thermometer, 28 science, not a lot, but nothing to scoff at. And let's have a look at the gravioli meter, if I can find that. Is that only on the other side, maybe? Has the symmetry forsaken me? It appears that it has. 87.1 science from the gravioli meter. And of course we have our crew member. Let's have a look at crew report. Oh, I transmitted that home already before I started recording, so that was done already. Of course, we still have the EVA report to do. And where is our little guy? On the other side of the ship. But of course, an EVA report for 56 science points. Wonderful. He can go ahead and keep that. And also go ahead and transmit that immediately for the 100% science gain that it gives. I'm going to collect the data from the canister, the thermometer and the gravioli sensor, but I'm only going to do so once I'm in the day site, otherwise the EVA becomes needlessly difficult. And that also means I'm going to do my circularization burn, well, right about now actually. So let's just fire up that engine and prune that orbit. Now it will take a while, so I'll reconvene with you once that is done and we're on the day side gathering the science. And there we have it, a stable circular 350 kilometer orbit around Venus. Now this obviously is the light side and you will notice that there are a lot of oceans, watery places or possibly it's liquid mercury or some other horrible stuff. Anyway, we definitely don't want to land in the water. It's called landing, not watering. So we also want to land in the daytime. So we're going to wait a bit and have the planet rotate under us. This is the beauty of a polar orbit. Let's have a look at what kind of time warp we can do that at so that we may have some land mass. Hmm, that looks awfully similar all the time. Does that rotate just so slowly or was my time warp not as high as I thought it was? Yeah, we're talking hours here, not yet days. So let's crank that up. Oh, we can't crank that up anymore. So we'll just have to stare at this planet that's going absolutely crazy. Oh, Gerbil Alarm Clock is doing something. Ooh, it's time to do something with the Prometheus. Are you kidding me? Eh, I was hoping that would not come and interfere with my mission here. Right, I shall take care of Prometheus and that will gobble up all the time I have this morning, which means that the next bit of this episode will be recorded several days from now, which you won't notice apart from possibly a slight discontinuity in my voice, pitch, ambient sounds and general demeanor. We shall see. See if you can tell. The next thing I'm going to say to you is definitely coming from the future. 
And cue the future! It's a few days later and in-game it's a few weeks or even months later and here we are. I have just visited our good friend the Prometheus, set that on an even lower trajectory with a new periapsis of 3.5 million kilometers, but we are here with far more exciting prospects. We have the Hephaestus spaceship here, which is now coming in for its landing. I have time warped time forwards so that we are now over a stretch of land that will be sunlit. The perfect circumstances for a landing if I do say so myself. So just to refresh your and my mind, the plan here is to use the fusion engine to completely bleed off this 7 km per second speed and then touch down gently on rockets aided by parachutes. So here we go firing up the engine locking in the retrograde course and I think I'm going to drop it to about two kilometers per second and then do a second deceleration burn when we're close to hitting Atmo. So I think at two kilometers per second nothing should really burn off in the top la in the top layers of the atmosphere. I hope that's accurate because if not then there are prob there will be problems. I also hope that we will be able to maintain as down orientation which is a proper rocket science ter term because if we go in face down uh, well we will be able to decelerate that will be fine however uh, the deployment of the parachutes which are all mounted on this side might cause a horrible pivot which will then break everything apart and of course we don't want that to happen so the deceleration burn has commenced. This is a lot more convenient than the Prometheus, which has to burn in pulses. This one, of course, main is happy maintaining constant thrust. Even though it is a lot better at doing so, it will still be a while until the 7 kilometers per second is all gone. Um, I am going to skip forward through time to that. So a little bit of a shorter hop rather than four or five days. This will be like five minutes, but I'll see you in the future regardless. And snap forward like five or six minutes. Here we are. We're currently plummeting down pretty brick-like. And considering that I've upped the thrust limiter to 100%, that means we're pumping full amounts of fuel into the engine for maximum thrust at minimum efficiency, just the way we like it. Now, I think it's also becoming time to re retract these heat radiators, because otherwise they might be sheared off, and that would instantly cripple this ship. Hey, what happened? Oh, it's just the camera that's going nuts. Let's have a look. We are, of course, now accumulating heat because it's not being radiated as efficiently. My hope is that as soon as we hit Venus atmosphere, that will cool these radiators even though they're folded up. For now, though, we do have some time before heat becomes a problem. We're at 5 kilometers per second, now 260 kilometers, and once again, my memory forsakes me because I can't remember at which altitude the atmosphere started. I think it was around 200 but I'm not sure anymore. This is also the reason why I cranked up the thrust because well, if we're going to if we're going to go too fast while hitting atmosphere, we are going to burn. And of course, we don't want to burn. We want to well, we can simmer, but we want to live. I think 3 kilometers per second hitting the upper thinner atmosphere is something we could get away with but I'd much rather have that be a, a lower amount. We started at 350 kilometers altitude, that was our orbital height, and I had guessed that that would give me plenty of time before plummeting to the ground to, well, get rid of the 7 kilometers per second. That turned out to be not quite the case. So, scratch one for me and score one for mathematics. If you, if you, you can calculate these things rather easily. I did not. So we're going to see, we're going to hit the atmosphere at about 4 kilometers per second. And we shall see what that does to our poor ship. And I hope it the answer will be not too much. Oh, we're already in the atmosphere actually. And that means that our engine is now starting to overheat. So I better throttle back a little bit. And I could just as well do that with the throttle, but I'm doing so with the thrust limiter, because why not? We are getting heating effects. Let's have a look at our... Yeah, the heat is definitely rising. This could be a problem. This could definitely be a problem. 
I'm going to deploy the parachutes to slow us down faster. Go on, parachutes, deploy. They do nothing. We are slam we're eating atmosphere at four kilometers per second and we're coming up on a thousand degrees. That's too much. That's too much. God damn it, slow down. Our engine is almost overheating. We're starting to explode. We are starting to explode. I'm cutting the engine. That Will we ever make it off the planet? Will we even make it down to the planet? That is the question. Enfil is deadly afraid. Our reactor is still online. Our engine hasn't burned off yet. I'm not sure about the radiators. Generator shutdown. No radiators available. We're definitely not going anywhere. The engine is teetering on the brink of destruction, but that doesn't matter because it doesn't have radiators anymore. Now the question is, will Enfil be able to secure the landing? This here is almost overheating. We are slowing down. We're at three and a half kilometers per second. Will Enfil make it down? Will the parachute survive? It does look as though they will. No! They deploy and everything went horribly wrong. The parachute should not have deployed. The crew member Enfil has been killed. I don't know what happened there. They deployed and that ruined everything. That ruined everything, didn't it? That upped the G-forces. Anyway. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Shit. Damn it. Um, it appears that Venus's thick, thick atmosphere has catastrophically decelerated the craft to the point of Enfil collapse. Enfil, of course, being the name of our latest martyr. Let's have a look at our options. Uh, how can we proceed? We have the Prometheus on its way to a low solar orbit which is a fairly self-contained mission the concept of a single stage to everywhere lander as proven insufficient at least a design that tries to combine space worthiness with atmosphere worthiness doesn't work on Venus so I think our next step will be to return to these airless worlds that we come to know and love. Ah, oh, am I kidding? We're just going to go to the moon. We're going to pick up our stranded Kerbal. Leave. Oh no, we're not going to pick him up. After the all these years, I'm, I'm, he, he'll be more at home on the moon than he will be at, at home on Earth. We're going to send him a house. We're going to send him a house. We're going to try and get a research base together because with all these failed missions the orbiting science stations and which will be the landed science stations they have I think the best the best prospect for any long-term generation of science points because well these exploration landers they're not really doing such a stellar job so check back when the next episode comes around for a lunar base landing adventure. The good news is that these fusion engines have become cheaper. We can now use them on landable bases. I'm going to make a big lunar lander that will be unhampered by the effects of atmosphere. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video after a few days of outages. I'm back. I'm going to make more for the next few days and then I'm going to have to pack up all my stuff, get on a plane and go places. Yeah. And I'm going to think of new missions because damn it, I had hoped the Hephaestus would be a success, but it wasn't, as you saw. Thanks for watching. Once more, see you next episode. Goodbye.